Okay, welcome back. And today I'm really excited because we're doing one of my favorite problems. It's the famous Robin Hood swing problem. And it's from uh, Physics Aviary. And Physics Aviary, if you don't know, is a great uh, website for some good practice problems and to review like the, the physics concepts uh, that we have covered in other videos. Okay, so here's the basics of the problem. We have Robin Hood over here and he's gonna go swing down on his little pendulum. And then he's gonna, at, when he reaches his dotted line, he's gonna let go and fly off into the water. And what we wanna find is how far horizontally does he travel? Basically when, at what point, like X over here, will he hit the water? So we have a, um, some given quantities. We have the length of the rope, which is 8.15. We have uh, the angle from the vertical point of, when, of release, which is 37.42 degrees. We have Robin Hood's mass and the gravity on the planet, which is different, which is 10.7 instead of 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. And then we have when he lets go above the surface. So for the first part of this problem, how we want to approach it is using some basic concepts of energy. And I'm not gonna cover those in this video, but uh, just for reference, I, we're using these two equations here. Uh, we have kinetic energy is going to be equal to one half mv squared. And then the gravitational potential energy is going to be uh, mass times gravity times uh, the change in height, basically. So what's basically happening is Robin Hood has some potential energy stored over here. And when he reaches, the bottom of his swing, which is acting in a pendulum manner, he's gonna, all his potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy. And we're gonna use the kinetic energy formula to find the velocity. So what we have to do first is establish the change in height to determine the potential energy. So right here is gonna be height equals zero, and this is gonna be 7.85 meters above the surface because this is where he's gonna let go. So what we're trying to find is this difference in height here, this uh, delta H. And how we're gonna determine that is by using some basic trig, which hopefully you guys know. So we have this triangle over here, uh, the dotted line, the length of the rope, which is 8.15, and then the theta. <clears throat> so we're eventually gonna need to know both of these sides, so let's just find them out for right now. So uh, this side over here is going to be uh, 8.15, let's see, 15, uh, it's going to be the cosine of that, cosine 37.42, and then this one is going to be 8.15 sine 37.42 degrees. So, okay, so now that we have uh, this this height, uh, this length of the side here, we can uh, use that to determine uh, this change in height. So when the rope reaches the bottom, it's gonna be traveling like in this pattern and it's gonna be 8.15 meters down across. So we're gonna do 8.15, the length of the rope, subtracted by this to determine the delta H. So let's put that number over here. So the change in height is going to be equal to 8.15 cosine theta, which is, let me see, uh, 6.42 uh, meters. So we're gonna do 8.15 minus 6.42, and then delta H is going to equal uh, 1.68 meters. So now we can use this potential energy equation to determine the potential energy. So this is what's gonna happen. The PEG is gonna equal the uh, MGH, which is going to equal, as I said before, the kinetic energy. So we can go like this. Um, we can fill in our quantities. We have our mass, which is what, 63. Actually, no, we should keep it in variable form. So let's see, the MGH equals one half. Squared, boom, cancel these, and then we're gonna get V is equal to two G H. Right, two G H is the square root of that. So V, when we plug in our quantities, is gonna be equal 
to the root of 2 times 10.7 times 1.68 and that comes out to 5.99 meters per second. So now what we have just found out is this release velocity. So the velocity uh, that Robin Hood has when he just lets go. So we just did the energy part of the problem. Now we're transitioning to the kinematics part. And so what we're going to have to do to find his total horizontal distance for this um, part of the problem is um, just use some basic kinematics that we covered in previous videos. So let's see, we know the basic equation since this is a horizontal velocity, um, the x is just going to equal um, the uh, velocity times the time. So we're going to have to figure out the time. And to do that, we can just use uh, the, this third equation over here, which we already have. So let me, I'm going to erase this because we already got that. We have our velocity, so we need more space. All right. So v equals 5.99, we need to find the time. So let's rearrange this equation. <clears throat> We're gonna have the time is equal to, uh, let's change this here. We're going. We're acting in terms of y since we're trying to find the time. So it's gonna be vi t plus one half a t squared. Since he is not, uh, he doesn't have any uh, horizontal velocity, this goes to zero. And then we can get this equation, t equals root 2y over a, which is g in this case. So our time is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times this 7.85, because that's how high up he is. 7.85, and that's going to be a negative displacement because he's falling down, and our gravity is going to be negative 10.7, and our time comes out to... Let me check, uh, 1.21 seconds. So now we're finally found our time and we can find the horizontal displacement for this half because we don't want to forget. We need to find this whole horizontal displacement and we're only getting this kinematics part. So the X is going to equal to 5.99 with this time, 1.21. So we get, let me see, 7.26 meters. Now, all we have to do is add this to this part that we found in the very beginning to get our final. So x final equals x initial plus uh, this part, or x1 plus x2. And it's going to be x final equals, let's see, well, 8.15 sine 37.2 is about 4.95 meters plus 7.26 meters. And then we get our final answer, which is 12.21 meters. There we go. So that's how you do the famous Robin Hood swing problem. It's kind of long. It incorporates the energy and kinematics that we have learned into one problem. I should recommend you guys try it out on the Physics Aviary. Thanks for watching.